Good morning. Today is our last day in Kampala. We've really enjoyed our stay in Kampala uh, and we've realized that Kampala, all the places, all the historical sites that we went yesterday, if you haven't checked that video, please do. Yes. At the Gaddafi Mosque, you can see all those historical sites. It is at the center of, the, of Kampala. So with that, you might not need a guide to take you there. But once you get there, of course, you need someone to explain everything to you. And they usually offer a guide. Today, we are going to check out the high temple that we missed yesterday. It's usually closed on Mondays and Fridays. And then we'll proceed all the way to Mbarara. We might pass by Entebbe, depending on the time when we'll finish. But we are heading towards Mbarara. Please check out the, the entire journey. It has, it has been a journey from Mombasa. We've come all the way. We went, we stayed in Jinja. We really, we loved Jinja. Jinja is a vibe. And we've come to Kampala. Kampala is also nice. Uh, we are still finishing up before we go all the way to Mbarara. But we really loved Jinja. So let's go and explore Kampala some more. When you go to most of these places in Kampala, you need to dress decently, especially the ladies. You need to dress decently, wear something that... It, I would tell you to... Uh, the best thing is wear a long dress because there are places you cannot get in with, with trousers or tight clothes. There are also some places that you cannot go with, with short clothes. You have to cover, like the mosque, you have to cover your head and you have to wear, you cannot go in with pants, but you need to wear some dress, a long dress. Checked out, but Baha'i is very close to where we were staying while in Kampala. We are just from Baha'i Temple, so we are not allowed to film inside. But we took a few videos on the outside. Uh, Baha'i is a religion. I never knew about it until today. It's a religion that unifies almost all religions. There is Muslim, there is Islam, there is Christianity, there is Buddhism, um, there is science. They also allow science because they allow people to freely, independently search for truth. The difference between this temple and many other temples is that this one has nine doors representing the nine messengers of God. It's all about peace, unity, and finding the truth. And I think I'm going to Google some more about it because it's something very, uh, very new to me. But this religion brings all people together. I'm a Christian, and anything that unifies people, I'm all about it. So this is very interesting. And it's a place where you can just get in, read the holy books, or you can just read when you're getting in, as you've seen in the rules, you must dress modestly. It's free of charge. The architecture is quite unique. You have seen it, been there yes, since 1958. It was built for three years by the Israelis. Even though Baha'i is a Persian religion, it is originally from Persia, but it unifies everyone. Other than that, today Hadia is dressed properly. Yesterday, Yesterday, Ali Choma. Choma, I had to tie uh, uh, different colors of scarves as you have seen <laughs> on, the, on the videos. Mm -hmm. But I really had fun. I had fun regardless of Choma fashion wise. <laughs> I enjoyed So, guys, we are headed towards Entebbe. We were supposed to go check out some cathedrals. Uh, the, there is a Catholic. A cathedral and there is also an Anglican cathedral that you are supposed to pass by but we are running out of time and because we are taking a road trip we want to show you guys our trip as much as possible we want to show you the features that we see along the road and how interesting the road trip will be so God willing we'll come back and show you guys those ones but for now let's go to Entebbe and then we'll proceed later to Mbarara that is that is our plan but things may change if you find that Entebbe is more interesting we must stay for we must stay longer, maybe a day, a day more. But so far, our plan is to go to Entebbe and then to Mbarara. So, guys, let's go. On our way to Entebbe, we decided to use the Google map to find the easiest route. Guess what, guys? We are in the expressway! Uganda has one, guys. We all know 
of the Nairobi Expressway. Of course, Kenyans, as usual, we have hyped it properly and it's worth the hype. So guys, this is the Uganda Expressway. Unlike the Nairobi Expressway in Kenya, we had to pay the toll fee at the entry point, which is also the toll station before we used it. So the toll fee was 5,000 UGX. That was so new to us. We're used to just getting a ticket and then we we pay the toll fee at the exit point but this was different i must admit that the road is very neat The nature of the real estate on our way to Entebbe suggests that the city is inhabited by middle and high income earners because most of these houses are modern marshonets. They are less congested and very organized as compared to Kampala. Now guys, drum rolls! We are getting into Entebbe city. My first impression is that it is organized, clean, and oozes wealthy vibes. I believe that there are some residents of the city who live here and work in Kampala because with the expressway, it is very possible to commute daily, especially if you own a car. As a traveler, you might want to check out the Victoria Mall, which is right at the center of the city, Entebbe Botanical Garden, which also has a historical monument, Mabamba Bay Swamp, with the most unique birds around, they have the equator, the Entebbe Zoo, and so many islands in Lake Victoria, very beautiful, with very unique wildlife. So this, this city has spread out so well, that is why it looks so organized and it's very clean. I repeat, Entebbe is very clean. We are trying to figure out a, a way to get to the beach and we've been told the white beach is the best beach around here, a public beach. So this and there is the airport, Entebbe airport, seeing Lido beach, there is Lido sand beach and then there is white sand beach. I think you're getting in from it. So it is right opposite the airport. You can see there are some aeroplane here. Kampala does not have an airport. You have to come all the way. The entrance to this place is 10,000 or you have to buy a drink or food for you to get in. That money, I think it is, it is just a small fee for maintaining this beach. Now, my Kenyan brothers, why isn't our, our beaches in Lake Victoria this big? Look at that bird. Oh my God. Adia, are you scared? No. Okay. It's a Maribu stock. Maribu stock? just walking in the park guys there's that pier over there if you want to take a nice photo you can take there and then some activity there they are cycling into the water that is so cool Is 
been wondering why fish is really expensive in, in Uganda in general. There's a waterfall we went at a very remote place in Jinja and yet fish was about 1200 Kenya shillings which is a bit high considering it's just next to a river and a lake. So my theory is this, either they don't fish much or Ugandans don't enjoy eating fish, that's why it's quite expensive. What's your favorite? Or in Kenya, we eat a lot of Chinese fish. We mm. fish a lot. We fish a lot, but we also import a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even here, it, it was around 50,000 mm -hmm. Ugandan shillings. That is very expensive compared. Very yeah, that is pretty expensive. So guys, we are from the White Sands beach and it is right next to the airport. You can see those airplanes. If you by any chance you get here when the sun is setting, the White Sands beach has a very nice sunset. So you might want to pass by there, but there is an entrance fee. In Tebe town, or is it a city? It looks like a small city. So we are trying to find our way back to the main highway so that we can go to Mbarara and we're expecting to see some very nice views because around the same, in the same route there is Ruenzori, Ruenzori mountain, uh, there are a couple of lakes I think, Sindio? So guys, on my right, this is a research institute. It's a virus research institute. Look at Lake Victoria. Oh, it's showing off. There are multiple places you can be able to see, to have a good view of Lake Victoria, just along the road. Here goes the lake again. We've realized that, uh, okay, based on what we've seen in Entebbe and in Mwanza, we have concluded that the Kenyan side of Lake Victoria is the only side that has not been properly uh, conserved because these other sides woo, because these other sides you'll see like, like the places are very clean it looks like someone cleans them every day or something so guys our Google map brought us to this ferry here and the, there's a lot of certainty with the ferry the next trip will be at 5 30 and that ferry can only take nine cars when we got there there were a couple of lorries ahead of us so we're not sure whether we would get a spot on the on the ferry after the 5 30 trip the next trip would be at 8 30. now imagine just staying there waiting for the ferry until that late and then you miss a spot it won't make sense so we've decided to reroute and go back using the, the expressway. It will take us some time. It's actually like almost 80 kilometers going backwards, but it is a route that we are sure of. So we are going back. When you come to Entebbe, just know that unless you are very punctual and you, you have enough time is when you can use the ferry. Otherwise, it might waste your time. So I've bought some jackfruit. This one is like 500 Ugandan shillings and I'm the only one who eats jackfruit in this car. So everyone else is like, finish eating faster because we cannot stand the smell of the jackfruit. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, nice. Hmm? I love jackfruit. Ooh, I can eat it the entire day. It's still in Tebe. So you can see where people live. It is a very clean place. You, even you can see the streets. Look at this. Very clean. We 
we are back to the expressway. Tundrudi, tundrudi. So that's another 5,000. And that's another 5,000 shillings for the expressway. The bridge here. Wow, look at that. That is the expressway. You see? While driving around these Ugandan roads, especially anywhere near Kampala, be careful with the motorcycles. There are so many, and I don't think most of them know the traffic rules, or they know, but they just ignore. There are too many, they are too rowdy on the road, it's difficult to manage them. Kingera. We are at Nawakoda and we are headed to Marara and we've been told that the road is much better, it's, it's, it's good, as good as the one you have seen so far and we are hoping to get there maybe at 8, it's, right now it's 7, 8 or 9, so it's going to be quite a journey. So guys, we did not manage to get to Mbarara, so we decided to sleep at Masaka. Apparently it is also a city and we just looked for an accommodation in booking.com and we found this hotel, it's called LC Hotel. And we booked like uh, two singles and one, not single, one single and one double at around 8,000 Kenya shillings total. That one is above, way above our budget, but we got here a bit late and we needed to be comfortable because we still have a long journey tomorrow, maybe a hundred kilometers. That one could be an hour, an hour or an hour and a half, depending on the traffic. We've realized there's a lot of traffic in Uganda. Guess what? That 8,000 shillings that you're paying for is inclusive of breakfast and sauna. <laughs> hey. I'm telling you, I know in this entire trip we're not going to get another opportunity to, to go to the sauna. So, we're not letting this one pass. We have to go to the sauna. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we decided to sleep at Masaka because 
Uh, we got advice last time when we drove all the way from Kigali to Arusha for 24, for 24 hours. We got advice from you guys. You know, we usually listen. We got advice from you guys that it's not safe to drive like that at night, especially if it is a place you don't know. Because just in case of any accident, maybe a, a, car, a tire burst or maybe a technical issue, we cannot stand next to the road somewhere in a strange like in a strange place like in a place we've never been to before because we don't know if it is a safe place or not so we took that advice and we decided to sleep at Masaka just to be safe because if we could have driven all the way maybe we could get there at midnight there is it is quite some jam along the along the road and plenty of roadblocks so here we are we bought some Rolex along the road guys by the way tip if you want the best Rolex go to the place where it is being cooked just order yours let it be cooked while you're looking at it there and then you cut it when it's still very hot if you get the ones that have already been made or it was maybe the chapati was made in the morning and then they just add the eggs it won't be as fresh as what you got so today we got very very fresh Rolex I've carried mine I ate like half of it I've carried another one, half of half, uh, the other half, not, not a full one. I've carried the other half and I'm going to take some tea and then I'll go to the sauna. Sauna, <laughs> on a budget trip, oh my god, that is a thorough treat. By the time we leave here in the morning, the bed will be in a very bad shape. So this is how the room looks. This is a king size bed. It's for the for the double. Double room has a king size bed, and the single room has. I think it is a queen size bed. Yes, it's a comfortable mattress. We have a TV here. I don't know if it is working, but I think there is cable TV here, so we we'll probably might watch some this TV. Mm. Now the the only downside to this is that the toilet. Or maybe the washroom area is a bit narrow, but there is hot water, so we are not going to complain. Yeah, and there is also a balcony, so we are going to, all of us are going to sit here and have our dinner and discuss before we go to the sauna. And then, anyway, let me show you the balcony. I'll show you the balcony in the morning. So guys, stay tuned and let's catch up in the morning. We are getting into the sauna. I think there is a steam from there. Look at our breakfast. These people make me almost miss breakfast. I feel very angry person today. Mm. Welcome to our breakfast. Some Rolex and roasted potatoes. And it looks really delicious. I did almost missed breakfast. Mm. Missed breakfast because some people love the rain. I mean, it started raining in the morning when I was just about to wake up. I just, I just said. Ten more minutes won't kill. I know it's only <laughs> to an hour. It's now ten. Praise the Lord. This is the only we ever left the apartment. <laughs> So guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. You can also comment below on what you think of the video. This is Masaka. Uh, we'll just do a very short trip around the, the city to show you how it looks like before we proceed to Mbarara. So there are these uh, t uh, commercial buildings on both sides of the road. Looks like this is some sort of business center. So 
So this is Elgin Road. And by the way, guys, so far we've not come across any Kenyan number plate along this, uh, okay, from Kampala, especially from Entebbe all the way to Masaka. We've not come across any Kenyan number plate, but we've come across several people who've been to Kenya. So they, every time they see us, they just want to speak Swahili with us. <laughs> It looks like it's so much fun knowing Kiswahili in these sites. Look at that. Meat is hanging outside. In this, in their butcheries, they hang their meat outside. Yeah, it is a big town. Look at that mosque up there. Yeah. Oh my god, how is that? <laughs> <laughs> now guys, look at this car. It is, it is a drive, it is a car for driving. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. This is cute. It looks like it's a new building, it's not yet occupied. Guys, we're just giving you a brief tour of this place. So far, we've seen that they hang their meat outside. I just say that what I've said is vulgar, <laughs> hanging your meat outside. <laughs> Adia, bring your head here. No, it's yeah, so. but you see, you've seen that the, 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 their beef is just outside the butchery. It's not inside the butchery. That is what I meant, Adia. Please come on. They hang their meat on the streets. Let me use the right words. Yes. You're not going to take the Swahili from me, Mimi Lazima. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Unongia Kiswahili? <laughs> Haya, sasa, nenda moja kwa moja. Sweet people, eh? Nice, nice people. I think when you speak Kiswahili in Uganda, it, it makes you appear like you are well traveled. Alien in a nice way. Yeah. I didn't think people were so excited to speak in Kiswahili. Anywhere. Yeah. So I should be proud of myself that I know. One more language. You can see that the meat is hanging on the streets. Look at that. The offals, the ribs are all on the street. That was different. forest. You realize that when you compare the roads from Malaba to, to, to Roro and then to Jinja and to Kampala, these ones are better than those ones. I don't know why but their roads here are much much better. It's here they plant a lot of bananas. Just look at this. It's in both sides of the road. We are heading towards the direction where the Ankole people stay. So we are expecting to see those huge horned cattle like the ones we saw on our way to Rwanda. buses take people passengers to Rwanda. to Rwanda yes. yeah see all these jackfruits there are a lot of jackfruits in Uganda I would thrive here what is your beef with jackfruit I do not have any I just don't like the smell of jackfruit <laughs> I don't even know how it tastes actually I just can't no, tell you it know smell. you're just hating it without even 
Yes, the smell. Without even trying it. The smell. It needs to smell nice to, to be able to... It smells nice. No, it does not. But yeah, sure. It's a bit nauseating, but... I'm the only one who eats jackfruit in this car. Now, every time I buy jackfruit, these guys usually just want me to finish it as fast as possible. And that is not the fun of eating jackfruit. You have to eat it slowly and savor the taste. You know? <laughs> <laughs> not nauseate everybody in the car. No, like, you guys have a problem. That fruit has a nice smell. The smell is relative. Huh? It's Luengo. Luengo. Luengo district. So the town is Mbirizi, but it is in Luengo district. So guys, welcome to Chazanga. It is spelled as K-Y-A-Z-A-N-G-Y. Apparently any pronunciation of K-Y-A is not Kia, it is Cha. So it is Chazanga. This place some, has some very beautiful landscape. There are plenty of hills and valleys and they are very, very green. Very green. Bananas all over, <laughs> of course, covered by bananas, and there are also a lot of uh, dairy farms around. That is why you will see a lot of uh, a lot of calabashes being sold by the road. You can see bananas. Bananas are the staple food of people in Uganda. I would like to know the type, how many how many ways they cook these bananas because. I only know of maybe one or two. Three. Three? Yeah. You can boil them? There's katogo. Oh, there is katogo. Apparently, uh, you remember You remember in Rwanda, agatogo was like uh, plantains, like stewed plantains. Now here it is called katogo, but the katogo is mixed with, either you mix it with beans or you mix it with, with some beef. There is also boiling. You can boil bananas with their peelings for breakfast. I remember when we were young, we used to eat that in, at my grandmother's place. You just boil the, the plantains and you take it with some tea. And which other way? The I, roasted one that we've been eating along the road. They yes. Deep fried? Deep fried? No, no, no. They're just roasted. They're roasted. But those ones are a bit ripe. Yeah, they're, they're not entirely like uh, green. green. They are almost ripe. Oh, and we've also we've also taken some banana crisps. It's more diverse than maize. Like we we take maize in Kenya. In Kenya, we only we roast maize, we boil maize, and we cook it. Uh, we 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 mill, it. we mill it and use it to make ugali or porridge. Did I just say porridge? porridge. We have seen a Kenyan car behind us, it's a truck, and the driver keeps hooting at us. Now <laughs> we've just been doing like this. <laughs> He's right behind us. See that number plate? It's a KC, KCV. Yes. Oh my god, just look at this landscape. Oh. Ah. Ah, now we've said, that we've said hi to our Kenyan brother, we can now speed. We're just waiting for that greeting. 
Mpumude. Oh, there is, oh, the route to Mpumude is in this direction. So guys, guess what? We've come across the Ankole cows. Let's get closer. I've been meaning to get a photo with these cows for a long time. Here they are. Look at them. Look at that. Oh my God. Eh? Ayezi. Guys, have you seen the landscape? Those cows are majorly used for meat because they produce very little milk, but very creamy milk, very rich milk. And apparently we are going to see more of them as we approach Mbarara. But those are the famous Ankole cows with huge horns. Finally, I get to take a photo with those cows. When we were on our way to Rwanda, we were just very late. Every time we come across it, we, we just see it when we, we've already gotten close to it and at a very high speed. At least this time I was able to take photo with them. Oh, I feel so accomplished. Okay, we are going to Barara, but this route can take you towards Rwanda. That is why I think there is very, uh, there's a lot of similarities in this landscape. The topography is quite, quite similar. The landscape, the topography, and everything around this place is very similar to Rwanda. Now this is Liatonde, or I don't know how it is pronounced, but it is written as L-Y-A, Liatonde. So we've seen more, more Ankole cattle here. It looks like this is Ankole land. You have a beautiful soul And I don't want to let her go but you don't want to let me, don't want to be laid down You fear if you let this be, I won't be around I see the fear in your eyes when we talk about being just you and I I know that you've been hurt before And you don't want to go near the flames and get burned again at Akegeti and from our Google map it is somewhere close to Lake Mburo where we are heading. Around this area you'll realize there are not there are no many plantations like uh, pla banana plantations like we had seen behind but there are a lot of dairy farms and in these dairy farms they rear a lot of uh, we've come across some fresh and cows for milk and also we and also we've come across uh, the Ankole cows for meat. I can say maybe this place is very similar to West Pokot. Very, very similar to West Pokot in Kenya. Now there are so many lodges here. Leopard rest, a camp, accommodation. Yes, we've seen a camp. There is also this rock. There's a rock here. It's called Proakobo Rock. Now, 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 where are we heading? So this is the road to the national park and it's a bit bumpy for our car but we will try to get there. Ooh. Ooh. Challenges of having a car with a low clearance. So there are a couple of Ankole cattle in the national park or on your way to the national park. So when you go in this direction, be sure to take a few photos. We've seen uh, zebras, we've seen some antelopes, and plenty, plenty of Ankole cows. Are you wondering at some point if we'll see any animals? No, I know we'll see animals. You know. You know we'll see more animals? I know we'll see more animals. And more animals that are not the Ankole yes. cows? Yes. Okay, what do you think of the how far the gate is from the main road? Uh, it's quite inconvenient, especially. 
especially the road. The road is really bumpy. It could discourage anyone. You have a beautiful soul. And I don't wanna let that... The first safari car we are seeing in, of the day. Finally. How many kilometers from the road? Nine. Nine kilometers. Fifty. Yeah. So the cows are part of the sightseeing. We are finally here at the gate. You can see some baboons there. And I, I know that you've been hurt before and you don't want to go near the place and get right. We have 70 species of mammals. Okay. Of which the common ones are the zebras, mm -hmm. like water bugs, mm -hmm. giraffes, mm -hmm. hippos in the lake, mm -hmm. and many more. So the nocturnals we have the cats like leopards. Okay. You, those, you have pangolins here? Yes, we have them. But those are seen during the night. And some of them, you, they are seen in late night. We also have the birds, okay. over 350 species. So many. So many. <laughs> what hogs? Uh -huh. Oh, so they have what here? What hogs? Oh. Yes. That one cannot ride the zebra like you do to the horses. Yeah. yeah, because I think zebras are not very easily tamed. We have communities uh -huh. who have. Um, there are hotels in the park, mm -hmm. so they stay in the park. So which communities are these oh, that live yeah. in the park? Uh, these are local people from nearby the national park. Uh, basically, Ankole are just pastoralists, right? Yes, but even some, some other... They were true, uh, the Ankole people, they are divided into two. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the pastoralists. Cultivators. Okay. So the work of cultivators was just to, to dig, growing crops. Mm -hmm. They all look the same, but they ha they have different color patterns. Yeah, they're like the fingerprints. Exactly. <laughs> and their stripes are there to serve the purpose. The they purpose. act as the heat regulators. Oh. Because when it gets hot, uh -huh. as the black color absorbs the heat, uh -huh. the white color will reflect it. Uh -huh. That is why you will never find a zebra wallowing in the mud like what the buffaloes and the watch hogs do when it gets oh, Okay, hot. I thought they were just meant to confuse their, predat their, that their is predators. Another purpose. That is another purpose. Okay. Root of and root of root. lastly, they, because of having different color patterns, mm -hmm. it is easier for the fowls to identify their mothers because each fowl will mark a specific pattern from its mother. Mm -hmm. So to be knowing, this is my mom and this is mm -hmm. my mom. Mm -hmm. Yes. Buffaloes. They're just big cows. They are wild cows. <laughs> and they, but the only thing is that buffaloes, mm -hmm. uh, the shape of the horns are different mm -hmm. from the cows. Mm -hmm. And also, when you come to the gestation period of the buffaloes, mm -hmm. it is more than the one for the cows. Mm -hmm. We need a bigger car for such activities. Sure. Uh, because we love such activities, we need a bigger car. Asian uh. migrants. Oh, mm -hmm. they migrate all the way? Yes. Okay. So they're, so they're just waiting for this, the, the, the ducklings to grow bigger. Yes. And then they migrate. Yes. Even I forgot the babies for the, the next As day. long as the water levels, I mean, if this water dries right. up, they go. Right. Yeah. And they are very clean, this in Poland. Ever. Very clean? Yeah, ever clean. Looks like their meat is very nice. But yeah. it's lean. Yeah. It's lean meat. It's a good meat. Good one. Okay, mm. what is the difference? There is antelopes and gazelles. What is the difference between antelopes and they gazelles? All, they are all antelopes. They are all antelopes. Gazelles and impalas. And water bugs. And toothies. And water, and water bugs. bugs. And dick dicks. And dick dicks. Mm -hmm. And elands. And mm -hmm. bush bugs. They are all, all antelopes. Are antelopes. antelopes. So the word antelope is just a general name. Okay. Given to the like, animals. Like saying cats. Yeah. Given to the animals mm -hmm. that have spider horns. 
So you can't call the buffalo an antelope. Seventeen, we're growing up, sneaking red wine in a paper cup. We saw the world so differently. Talk about things we never be. Seventeen was still so young, waiting outside for you to pick me up. Driving so fast we couldn't see. Everything changed so suddenly. I moved to Brooklyn, you begged me to stay. But I never called cause you thought that I'd change. We both went back on the pact that we made, but you're all I know. You came to visit, but I found someone. Drove to the lake house where we fell in love. I couldn't wait cause I thought you moved on, but you're all I know. I'm tired of running. I think we have those. You have them? Yes. Adia. Huh? We have them. Halapak. Yes, we have them in in Halapak. How do you call them in Swahili? I don't know. They are called pof. Pof. The buffalo has scared them. There. Oh, now we uh -huh. can see it very well. Lucky for us. Okay. We walk back to the car. They are big. The buffaloes have done their thing. Because buffaloes are just too proud. <laughs> Actually, two buffaloes are very proud. If you see them today, trying to attack a lion. Mm. <laughs> 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 this is what we call walking safari. Walking safari. We go and see the antelope. Finally at Lake Mburo, guys, just look at this. So beautiful. Now if you want to do like a boat ride, there is the boat. It's a very beautiful one. It, it has some space where you, it is like a safari car. It has the rooftop where you can just sit and watch. And this this lake is surrounded by a forest. I don't know what type of tree those are, I'll confirm. But I think they are very similar to these ones, to this tree. Why well, it's been quite a journey to get here. We had already booked some food when like two hours ago. I think right now it should be ready. And then guys, one thing guys you need to see. Look at this type of grass that I've seen this type of roofing in uh, Hunter's Paradise in Bungoma. If you remember clearly, go and check again. The roof before? looked like this, yes. Adia, do you remember this kind of roof? Yes. In the in Hunter's Paradise. Mm
So this is us enjoying our early, our early supper or early dinner while listening to those hippos. There are plenty of hippos here, by the way. So don't expect to come with your small boat into this lake because those hippos will topple them. But there is a there is a, a boat there which is more suited for this lake. Oh my, and the food is so delicious. Just look at these chapels. These chapels have gone to school with some chicken curry. Yummy. So we are also staying here. We found uh, some guest 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 rooms, uh, which is managed by by Uganda Wildlife Authority, which is just more or less like in in Kenya side they are called Kenya Wildlife Service. So they have the guest rooms and they are very decent, very decent. We'll 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 be booking the accommodation. We've already checked them out. So after this, we'll book the accommodation and go and rest there. They also have a canteen which has cheaper beer <laughs> and cheaper soda. So for now we're just enjoying our meal and then we check out the sunset. You can see there is, I'm telling you, this, the cloud is covering the sun. I wish there was a better sunset. Okay, we're playing uh, some poker here. Our oh, Andadia has won for the very first the... time, like ever. Ever. We keep losing these games. Imagine. But today I have won. And she always has the, the, the speed A. <laughs> Who does that? Mm -hmm. Today uh, it has worked in my favor. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, we are somewhere very close to Lake Bu. Mburo. Le Lake Mburo. And we've been told that there are many other lakes that surround Lake Mburo. So Lake Mburo is the biggest in this national park. It's surrounded by papyrus reeds. This is our accommodation. I hope I'll be... But I can... Let me just show you. It is a very simple room. It's basically a self-contained room. Period. It is managed by the Ugandan Wildlife Authority. Authority. Apparently all the wardens speak Swahili. They understand Kiswahili. And they find our Kiswahili very weird. Now, um, we were trying to figure out how comes all the wardens here know Kiswahili. Is it, is it because they have the influence from Tanzania? Or is it a requirement for them? I, we really can't tell. But other than that, they are just the most friendly people around. I agree. Yes. So we are just going to play the poker and then we sleep. Actually, we've been told that even outside here, hippos pass by here. But then this lake has so many hippos that I wonder those who, how those who are camping are surviving. Because there's so many hippos, warthogs are all over. And I think it is because warthogs and uh, impalas, I think it's because there are very few predators here. So they they multiply and most of, most of them survive. Other than that, we've had a very, very good day, a very nice dinner. Right now we are just taking a few drinks, sodas, beers, and any other things. Mm -hmm. There are some people who love the Nile here, mm -hmm. the Nile beer. So we are just get entertaining ourselves because tomorrow we have an, a very, very long trip to go to. A lot of sightseeing. We are expecting to see two lakes tomorrow. We are expecting to see Mount Ruanzori tomorrow. So maybe some of them will see them from a distance because our car cannot get into many of those national parks. We are just lucky that this national park has the, the roads to the national park. Actually, the, inside the national park, the roads are graded, but outside the roads are a bit bumpy. But I don't think we will go to any other national park like that requires us to get in, but we will try to see the physical features from a very safe place, like Lake Albert Lake. Is El like Alba, Edward. like Edward, we're hoping to see them on our way to Fort Portal. And I'm told there is where now we will get good, good what? Good vibes, <laughs> touristic destinations, good vibes, yeah. sightseeing, very nice landscape. Everything nice is in Fort Portal, that is what they say. 
and as travelers we are here to go and confirm <laughs> well, we are here to go and confirm because personally so far i think uganda is so underrated it is so underrated there is very very little marketing of this country especially their attraction sites like lake Mbu like mburo this one that we came to was recommended to us by a friend from kenya but i've never seen ugandans advertising it anywhere yet it is such a beautiful place you've seen those sunset guys you've seen very early in the morning we'll be leaving and i hope you guys will, will join us so let's meet in the morning and let's continue with our journey very early in the morning we're having our breakfast and then we head to Fort Porton. But first we'll have to pass by Marara to do a, a short tour. We're still at Lake Mburo and this is our second day. We came in yesterday, yesterday in the evening. Actually in the afternoon we did, we did some game drive. We slept at the park in one of the guest house. We are just from having breakfast. I'm telling you guys, there is something about their wheat products. Very soft. You have to try it. I can't even explain it beyond this. It is the place where we found the softest chapati, softest pancake. I agree. <laughs> 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 so uh, when you came here, we, we, there are some tourists who came for a, a boat ride around the Lake Mburo. And we've been told it was formed as a result of some sort of depression. Even though there is a um, there is a traditional folklore. Yeah, it's a, it's called a folklore. Mm -hmm. Yes, a story that there were two brothers, um, Buro and another one. I've forgotten the name, but now the other brother had a dream that his brother had drowned, and he told his brother, "We need to leave this place because I have dreamt that it, it drowned." But the brother will just ignored him and said that is just a dream now there is one day one day he woke up and he found that, that that it had flooded and his house had sunk and that is why this lake is called lake Mburo. <laughs> i know i know okay, okay the brother moved to the hills yes, the brother moved to the hills you can see there are hills beyond the lake there are some hills over there you see the hills up there so the brother moved there but he he remained here and that is how he drowned and there was this depression i don't know how you if you believe that story other than that guys we are heading towards barara we are hoping to give you a short tour of the of the apparently it's a city we are hoping to give you a short tour of the city and then we go to fort portal everyone has been telling us you have to get to fort portal it is so nice it's so beautiful it's where most tourists like now we are heading there and it's almost 200 kilometers from here because it is almost 200 kilometers actually yeah. because you are not yet at Barara. You are 60 kilometers away from Barara? Yeah, 60 kilometers away from Barara, and then from Barara it is around 115 kilometers. Well, 181 actually. 181? Yeah. 181 kilometers to Fort Portal. So we still have a long way. But other than that, guys, look, look, look. How do you like my outfit? Outfit of the day. Huh? I feel I feel like I killed this look. That is why I had to show you guys. Because I feel like a million dollars. <laughs> 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 so we'll be heading there and stay tuned and let's go on this adventure. Uganda has really surprised me. In fact, every time someone tells me that they're coming to Uganda, I'm sure most of you have been like, you're going to Uganda, there is nothing there. Let me tell you, Maina. There is a lot in Uganda. Did you know of Lake Mburo? Have you seen how beautiful it is? It is very quiet. It has hippos, it has crocodiles. Around here, there are plenty of warthogs. Literally, they are like the goats here. They just come and play around here like with us. They don't even fear people, but they are quite friendly. There are a lot of baboons. There are a lot of zebras, different types of antelopes. If you love animals, if, if you love like trees, there are different types of acacia trees. Even birds, even birds, over 300, 300 species, species of birds, everything you, you, you would expect in, in a national park is here. So you can just come all the way. It's worth it. Or what do you think, Adia? Is it worth it? Totally worth it. Yes, it's worth Uganda it. Uganda has a lot to offer. It's worth it. 
and these people they are not even bragging now the problem to not bragging is the fact that in the process of not bragging they're not marketing their mm -hmm. country because this country has a lot a lot a lot a lot of things to offer and a lot a lot of things to be seen now imagine here since yesterday when we came here we were like only two groups it was uh, the three of us plus a couple who did some camping yes here yesterday night by the way this is the camping site if you want to camp here is where you bring your 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 tents and everything you just stay here there's usually a ranger who checks who takes care of this place and also they guard the place in the evening so do not be afraid i'm just telling you that but but i can't i can't do it <laughs> <laughs> the hippos i've seen there uh -uh. and crocodiles <laughs> and crocodiles okay i've not seen any crocodile but i'm told they're just ne near here and the hippos and then i tend here mm -mm. if you are courageous enough you just do it me i can't but there is a ranger with a with a bullet with a gun with a rifle and a bullet so guys let's go Look at this mountain, these hills, they have literally surrounded this national park and they're so beautiful, so, so beautiful. We thought, okay, from a distance, you'll feel like they're like table mountain, they're like super flat. But when you get closer, you realize that they are just a couple of hills which are conjoined. It can't necessarily be the easiest to hike, but they're very, very beautiful. I really miss driving on a tarmac road. <laughs> this is so smooth. The car had really suffered on the bumpy road. There are so many dairy farms on the valley. I can see a couple of cattle. Yeah, many water points, cattle, a lot of shrubs here and there. And very few settlements. So it looks like it's just a farm for some sort of farmers, cattle farmers. Welcome to Mbarara. So guys, welcome to Mbarara city. It is a city from what we could gather on the internet. I don't know how true that is, but here we are in Mbarara. So when you come to, to Mbarara, there is Igongo Cultural Center. You can get in there and learn more about the traditions and culture of the Ankole people. While there, you can organize with the staff so that you can go to the Bahima villages. This is a subset of the Ankole people. They can teach you how to make ghee, butter, and you can also take cattle to the swamp to drink water. How awesome is that? You can also go to Abagaben tombs and Kokonjeru tombs, where the royal people of the Ankole people are buried. Other than that, you might want to pass by Biharo Eclipse Monument, which is a touristic attraction. Roundabout eh, with the Ankole cow. Oh, that is cute. 
other than Lake Mburo, where we are from, there are several water bodies around. Uh, there is Lake Nakivale, which is very close to Nakivale refugee camp. But if you'd like to do some picnic, it has very nice sandy beaches. There is also River Ruizi, which pours into Lake Kachera, where you can do some canoeing and fishing if you have time. And then there is a church, a big church here. I don't know what church that is, but it's humongous. Now I have confirmed this is a city. It is confirmed that this is a city. It is not a town. It's not just a town, it's a city. There are huge churches here. What? what? Look at that. Looks like a church. And all this is manure. You see all the what what is carried in that car, in this in this truck. The people who live around here use a lot of natural fertilizer, so they they practice a lot of organic farming. Organic, you can see it up close. Yes. So guys, we've already left this Mbarara city and we're using the Kasese route to access to access Fort Portal. We've been told that there are a lot of physical features along this road. That is why we've taken this road. It, it will take us like four hours as compared to the other direct route, which would have taken us three hours. So this one is longer. We might get to Fort Portal a bit late, but we expect to see a lot of uh, physical features along the road, like uh, Ruenzori and all that. I don't know if this is the right route, but that is what the guide told us. Let's hope the guide was right. <laughs> but as at now, tunakanyaga mafuta. 120 kusongambele. So far, we've not come across so many pu uh, public service vehicles, especially the buses and the vans. It looks like Ugandan people don't travel much. These roads are very, very lonely. So welcome to Kabuohe, Kabuohe Shema. It is one of the towns along this road. There are a few commercial buildings along the road. So the town extends in this direction to my right. It extends in this direction and also along this road.
uh, Kampala International University teaching hospital for medical students. I've realized that around this place there are a lot of, of tea factories, meaning that in the, in the surrounding area there is a lot of tea being produced. And so far we've tried the Ugandan tea and I think it is, it, it is, some, it is really good, I would say. Yes, this is the Shaka town. Yeah, this looks like a, a pretty developed town as compared to the ones we've passed. So when you're driving in these Ugandan roads, just ensure you are at a speed where you can easily break because there are so many portals and some of them are so bad you might get yourself, you might be distracted or it might cause an accident. So if you, if you, come, if you are driving and you find some few cars going slowly on the road, just go slowly. Chances are there are plenty of, hot, of potholes or there's a, police, there's a police roadblock ahead. Like we said, here are the tea farms. Look at this, just by the road. These are tea estates where they get the tea that is taken to the factory. The, the, the tea is the main reason why this, there are so many towns along this road. Because on one side there's the tea plantation, the other side is the banana plantation. And they call it Kigoma. Here, it is Kigoma. Kigoma. Seventeen, we're growing up Sneaking red wine in a paper cup We saw the world so differently Talk about How beautiful! This is so scenic Way, way! Ooh. I know So suddenly I moved to Brooklyn, you begged me to stay I never called cause you thought that that changed We both went back on the pact that we made But you're all I know You came to visit but I found someone Drove to the lake house Right ahead in this blue truck that is just on my right You see all that? It is still being taken to the factory All this The views around here are the best Tired of running from the things that we knew Had to lose it all just to know that it was you I'm tired of running No, 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 I'm tired of running So guys, we were just passing by and then we saw this signpost. It's a very nice view of the valley. Look at that. It looks like the Rift Valley view there at the Mau. Mau escarpments. Oh my god, look at this. And I've realized that by the way, we cannot see very far because of the mist. Uganda generally is very humid. Or is it really humid? But there is a lot of mist in the air. Most of the time you cannot see very far. I've noticed that one even in even in very hot places. I don't know how that can be explained, but it's, it's always like this. 
but I'm glad we used this route look at this we free of charge When we were coming in this direction, there were some drivers, Kenyan drivers, whom we, we hoot at. Now we found them here. They're just also watching the view of the valley. Uh, it was just interesting to interact with Kenyans on the road. Imagine from Kenya to Congo and back, they might take an entire month. Entire month, you just bid your family goodbye. Anyways, let's continue with the journey. They'd carry some adapu all the way from Kenya and it will get to Congo. If only there was an ocean in Congo, probably it would grow. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, that was very interesting. Very, very interesting. Guys, this, this appears to be some sort of either national reserve or national park. You see the, the, the signs uh, that you need to go slowly because there are animals crossing. So this is where the two lakes meet. Yes, the lake extends further into lake into Queen Elizabeth National Park. Yeah, and it goes beyond Congo. It's actually shared. Like it already shared by, by it, Uganda and Congo. Okay. You can see this is the bridge that separates them. There's a lake on the right and there's a lake, lake on the left. I've realized that the most scenic bridges in Uganda are guarded by the policemen. So you cannot just go there and take photos or take pictures or take like videos. You must get some special permit from them. Now where to get the special permit is the other question. Where do you get the special permit? Hmm? As you can see these antelopes here. I don't know whether they're impalas or what. They're just right by the road. We were getting worried that we might not see any wild anim wild animals along the road, but we have seen some impala. <laughs> it's called a game game play because it's like you're just playing games with the wild animals. And then there is some water body up there. It's called Queen's Queen Pavilion. Queen's Pavilion. Yes, now you can see it. So guys, we told you that Lake Edward is somewhere close to the border between between Uganda and DRC. So this is the route. When you go to my left, is when you go to the that is the route towards DRC. You can see even from the signpost we we saw back there. So, but we are still going straight ahead. 
I don't know if we'll be able, I don't know if Ruanzori is somewhere here, but it's supposed to be somewhere here. Yeah, Ruanzori is supposed to be somewhere here. So let's hope we'll be able to see it. That is the route to DRC. So far the road has been scenic. Right now we are at Kasese and we have just seen the Ruenzori, Ruenzori mountain ranges. There are so many, others are clouded by some, covered by some mist, others are very close, but it goes all the way to DRC. Now, if you remember from your geography lessons, you remember Kilembe in Kasese region, if you remember that. It is where, is it copper or cobalt? Copper, yes. It has the largest copper copper deposit that used to be mined. I don't know if it is still being mined even to date, but copper was being mined there, if I remember my geography clearly. So these mountains, mountain ranges, they go so many, many kilometers. You see even up there where there is the mist, I'm not sure if you can be able to see, but it is all Ruenzori. Basically, anywhere you stand in the, in the town, you can be able to see Ruenzori ranges. All those are Ruenzori mountains. Wow. So they are just mountain ranges, very long. Okay. You just wake up every morning and you... Yeah, you wake up every morning and you, at the view of the mountains, imagine. And there are just so many ranges. I wish the sky was more clear. Been, it's not been easy viewing anything that is at a distance in... Yeah, there, 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 there. You can see them. I'm still hoping by some miracles you can be able to see it clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Hima town or Hima center. Yes, Hima cement. Yes, it is a cement factory. Hmm. And I think most of, I think this center or this town has grown because of this because of this factory because I've seen a few employees from the factory in overalls and going towards these shops. So probably these shops are here because of the factory. We are finally in Fort Portal, yay! Guys, if what you have seen on the road is something to go by, I believe this is where all the magic happens. And everyone I told that I'm coming to Uganda told me to ensure that I get this far. I'm so excited to explore the western side of Uganda and I know you guys will accompany me. So please comment below on places you'd like me to go around this place and hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed to this channel i mean by now i'm sure you have a reason to subscribe
Good morning in the city of Fort Portal. If you're wondering, Fort Portal does not have a fort. <laughs> yes, it does not have one. So guys, you're having our breakfast before we embark on our day and today's activity. It's all healthy. This is now Gatogo. Right? Katogo. Katogo. Mm -hmm. Or oh, in Rwanda it's Agatogo. Here it is Katogo. And guys we have so many things. You know you know why they say Fort Portal is the touristic destination in Uganda? We are going to find out. There are over fifteen crater lakes around this place. Like the views we are expecting to see. Eh, hey, Maze. I'm just ready for this. I'm ready for this. If you are just checking into this channel for the first time, we traveled all the way from Mombasa, we went to Jinja and stayed there, did a lot of activities. We went to Kampala, we stayed there and did plenty of other activities that you need to check. Very interesting things, but the Uganda is very beautiful. We went to Masaka, we went to Lake Mburo, we come all the way to the portal to just explore the Pearl of Africa. So just catch up and then let's continue with this expedition. So the women had gone to the forest to fetch firewood and they, they saw a, a man, a, a hairy man who was wearing back cloth. He was, <laughs> he was, he was hunting with, with, with his dog. So when they saw the man, they ran back home and told their husbands that they've seen a man in the forest. The men went there, they took the man, they took, them, they took him back to the village and they got him a wife. So they lived peacefully, then one day the man decides to go hunting in the forest and he never go, came back for three days. They kept looking for him, they never found him. But they found his clothes near the hot springs. The, some, some springs, he had disappeared and they found uh, his clothes in the hot springs. Now they, they named that place the Mel Hot Springs. Now they went back home, told his wife that they could not find him, their husband. The, the, the wife went looking for the husband and disappeared again. They went looking for her, they did not find her, but they found her clothes in another spot, a different spot. Now they named it the female hot springs. Because <laughs> because the woman the woman's clothes were found there. That's how they now that's how the male and the female hot springs were found. The clan believed that their ancestors their male ancestors are living under the male hot springs and their female ancestors live below there female hot springs now they they perform rituals annually to appease their ancestors ah. yeah and apparently the Sembliki national park allows them to get in and access the hot springs to perform their rituals isn't that a nice story that is a very nice story <laughs> most of the time we look at Ruenzori it's covered by a lot of mist if you'll just look keenly 
you will see the Ruenzori Mountains. They stretch from all the way from Kasese to around to here in Fort Portal, and that is almost almost 54 kilometers. The peak with, which is covered by ice is on the DRC side. DRC is Democratic Republic of Congo. There is Ruenzori Mountains. At least right here you can see it a bit clear. You can see a lot of settlements up there. Now, this is Ruenzori Mountains. Actually, I've realized that Ugandans are used to staying on elevated grounds. Hills, mountains, they are just okay with it. But they fear rivers. Most of them do not live anywhere near the river. In fact, River Nile has only a few settlements and it's mostly for foreigners. I don't know why. If someone can explain that to me, please do. No, someone said they are afraid of spirits. They believe that spirits live in the river. Ah. You've been to Mao Depression. Mao Ranges. This is something very similar, but this time it is the mountain. Adieu. What can I say? I'm speechless. I am speechless, my people. And yet some people live down there. You can see all those farms oh my god came to uganda never in my life did i expect to see this this was not one of the items i was supposed to see one of the features this is not one of them i just knew there were mountains from a distance and all that but i didn't expect this like at all this is a nice surprise that is the Ruenzori mountains up here it is even above here all the way and this is a viewpoint, so people just come and park here, and they watch, they watch that view. Isn't that view worth it? Guys, this view is worth it. It's unreal. Ruenzori viewpoint offers the best view of Ruenzori ranges, and it is free of charge, so you might want to come all the way. There are plenty of checkpoints along the road and the police officers are very friendly because they just want to confirm if you have the proper documentation. So this road, these checkpoints are because the place is very close to the DRC Uganda border. So they are trying to avoid illegal immigration. For travelers who like hiking, there are some facts you need to know. Ruenzori mountain is not one mountain, it is a range of mountains. It is shared by Democratic Republic of Congo, known as DRC, and Uganda. It stretches from Kasese all the way to Fort Portal. So for you to get to Mount Stanley, which is the highest peak of, of Ruenzori mountains, and it is also located in DRC, you need to go through so many mountains to get to the highest peak that is 5,109 meters high. So do your research and be prepared psychologically. The four communities that live on this side of Ruenzori Mountains are the Bamba, Bakonjo, Batuku, and Batwa. So, Batwa are the pygmies who are traditionally hunters and gatherers and live on the edge of the forests. Batuku people are cattle keepers and inhabit the open plains of, of the mountains, and Bakonjo cultivate the mountain slopes that you can see. The Bamba people are farmers and also live at the base of Ruenzori Mountains. I 
because when we were coming to Uganda, everybody was just really telling us go to Fort Portal, but they didn't tell us go to this and this place. Now we almost bailed out on going to see the the hot spring because we said like it's 50 something kilometers away and we only have two days here it might be too much but then again last minute we just told ourselves we'll, we might return here maybe so many years to come When we embarked on this journey, we realized that Fort Portal Bundibugyo Road was not properly marked. So as you're going to Semiliki National Park to see Sempire Hot Springs, ignore the first signpost as the old road was closed. The new road is much better because the old, old road had a lot of cases of landslide and bumpy roads. So. Just go 40 minutes ahead and you'll see the second signpost. And if in case you feel like you're getting lost, you can talk to the locals or you can talk to the police, policemen at the checkpoints. They will direct you. Be careful not to get to DRC because DRC is very, very close. If you have come this far to Semliki National Park, you might want to interact more with nature. So there's, there are a couple of activities that you can do. First of all, you can do nature walk like we are doing. There are so many waterfalls around this place, so you can ask your guide to take you there. You can also do bird watching because there are over 350 species of birds that you might enjoy watching and studying if you love them. And there is also safari walk. There are over 120 species of mammals. First, there are, there are primates like chimpanzees, baboons, red-tailed monkeys, and white and black calabas monkeys. There are also antelopes, buffaloes, and elephants, which come all the way to the hot springs to drink the salty water, and some of them just come to lick the salt. You can also visit Sempire Hot Springs, which, is, which are the female and male hot springs, and it is the main reason we've come this far because it is one of those places that bring people this far and it really did not disappoint. Apart from the mythical explanation of the formation of Sempire Hot Springs, there is also the scientific explanation. During formation of Ruenzori Block Mountain, there are cracks that form at the lines of weaknesses on the surface of the earth. So, whenever it rains, water seeps through these cracks and goes underground to form groundwater, which is like the underground rivers. This groundwater is heated by the hot rocks at the core of the earth and forms some pressure. Then the hot water is released through the cracks of the earth and, get, and it gets out as jets of hot water, forming the hot springs. Semuliki National Park has two hot springs, the male and the female hot springs. They are almost one to two kilometers apart and you can walk for around 30 minutes. You don't really need to take a cab. The name Sempire Hot Springs is derived from the Swahili phrase Sehemumbaya, which loosely translates to bad place that refers to the challenging rocky terrain that engineers had to encounter during construction of Fort Portal Bundibugyo Road that cuts across Ruwenzori Mountains. Entrance fee is inclusive of the guide fee, so you don't have to pay the guide separately, but always remember to tip the guide. We were lucky to find our tour guide Richard, who is well traveled and very, very experienced in this job. He has traveled around East Africa and at times takes his clients to Kenya and Tanzania as well.
this place has a strong smell of rotten eggs, which is a confirmation of presence of hydrogen sulfide. The water has sulfur, lithium, radium, calcium, and iron, and many salts in it. These salts are considered to have medicinal value for your skin, so it is a natural sauna. After some time, these salt and mineral deposits form a crust on the surface of the hot spring outlet and closes them completely. But due to the underground pressure, this hot water is forced out through other outlets and that is why the hot springs keep shifting positions. There goes the first one. There goes the first one. I think we'll keep it put it somewhere. And you were told how that lake came about? The story of how No! Hmm? It has gotten lost. I can see it from here. Are you sure oh. it's lost? <laughs> Mm -hmm. You had that amazing story oh, of how yes, the lake them. came into it. Buro and Chi... Chigarama. Yeah. <laughs> Chigarama. Yeah. Buro refused to move to the hills. Yeah. And Chigarama moved and the brother stayed because he thought it was just Ooh. a dream. Mm. The next morning he was... He drowned. Quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I love those stories. I actually eh? prefer those stories to the scientific explanation. Eh. I love folklore. Eh. <laughs> you know, two the last one is all about stories, and there are those that really where you feel Yay. they are connected. How, how many times have you eaten an egg prepared by natural means? Never. This is going to be your first time. Yes, yes. So you add like two to three years on your life expectancy. Amen! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to heat it. Pretty hot. Oh, it's very hot. You just... I'll try this when it cools down. Guys, there feels like sauna. Very nice steam. I, I could stay there the whole day, just like the sauna I had in Massacre. So this was the female hot spring. We're going to the male one now. It is quite some distance, so we might take a car or something, but let's go. As we wait for this one to cool down. Don't worry, you don't have to carry eggs all the way from Fort Portal because you can buy the eggs at the booking office. Every year in November, the Semiliki National Park Administration allows the Bamaga community members into the national park so that they can perform their rituals. This, are, this is the community that believes that their ancestors died at the hot springs and their gods reside in this place. Now, the male gods are believed to be at the male hot springs. So, men go there to offer sacrifices and perform rituals so that they can get wealth. The female gods are believed to reside in the female hot spring. So, the women go there to perform rituals and offer sacrifices to the female gods so that they can have ease during delivery of their children and also to increase their fertility. Another unique feature of these hot springs is the backdrop of the Ruenzori Mountains. This is just the most beautiful backdrop you could ever ask for. I mean guys, can you just believe these views? I find Semuliki National Park to be a very unique place because we saw some very beautiful palm trees that the locals used to make palm oil. 
this is very unique in East Africa because most of these countries import palmolain oil. If you'd like to stay here for a couple of days, you might want to check out Semliki Safari Lodge for accommodation. So just uh, find out more about them on their website or you can inquire at the ticketing office of the National Park. This egg test so weird. Imagine I cannot even finish it. Just kidding. It's just as normal as any egg that would boil in your house. And of course, it's some little salt, salt to make it taste really nice. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, before I finish my egg, when we googled initially, to get to see the hot springs was free of charge. But when we came here, we were charged 15,000 Ugandan shillings per person because we are East Africans. But if you are a foreigner, you pay $75. So remember that $75. Remember, it's $75 for foreigners, 15,000 Ugandan shillings for East African members. So, guys, we are going to our next destination. Guys, every time you Google about food portal, this is the place you. This is the place you see, the place we are about to go. This is the place you see. I won't tell you where it is until when you get there. So let's go as we eat our egg. Seventeen, we're growing up. Sneaking red wine in a paper cup. We saw the world so differently Talk about things we'd never be Seventeen was still so young Waiting outside for you to pick me up Driving so fast we couldn't see Everything changed so suddenly I moved to Brooklyn, you begged me to stay But I never called cause you thought that I'd change We both went back on the pact that we made But you're all I know you came to visit, but I found someone Drove to the lake house where we fell in love I couldn't wait cause I thought you moved on But you're all I know I'm tired of running I'm tired of running I'm tired of running from the things that we knew Had to lose it all just to know that it was you I'm tired of running Guys, this is the route we are using. We've just been laughing as we are coming in this direction. The dear right there is saying that by the time we get there, we'll be coughing like a portion meal. Yes, and we'll just keep asking them for a, for a bathroom. We'll take a shower first <laughs> before we get to eat because the road <laughs> is so dusty. Young man, yes. say something. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram versus reality. Hey. Hey. This is how you get to picturesque places. Imagine. It's not all about tarmac, tarmac roads. Oh, no, no, no. This is the dustiest road I've ever seen. Eh? But we are. Now you pass by this market. It looks like it's market day. And that looks like some very sweet sugar cane. Look at that. You can see like that bananas are there main cash crop here all these trucks those trucks belong to the middlemen yes. they come and buy from farmers and then they take it to towns yes okay. because we are deep in the village hey. it wouldn't make sense for them to be buying bananas here yet they are growing a lot of them now if there's ever, ever any request i would make to the ugandan government please Take care of your access routes and work on the potholes on the main highways. Eh. These access routes are just eh, eh. 
are on another level. So we are here at Aramwaga Rift Valley Lodge for the day trip. Come with us. It's one of those picturesque hotels and resorts in Port Porto, Uganda. That has those. You'll see. You'll see. Let me not let spoil me it not for spoil the rest. for you. Let's but go and watch it together. But I'm telling you guys the route to this place. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Ah. I think they have the concept of tiny homes. So guys, see what is behind me. The famous pods. So, this property it is called Ama Aramaga. I don't know why I keep saying Amaraga. Aramaga Lodge. It has only six pods, three on one, on one side and three on the other side, and the restaurant and the reception are just at the center. Uh, they, are, they have three fireplaces. There is this one here, there is this one here, another one at the reception, and another one at the center there. So these pods can accommodate a maximum of 14 people in total for the six pods, meaning that there are family rooms which offer more than which can accommodate more than two people. Uh, something else, it can accommodate six singles, like if each room, if each pod is occupied by one person, it can only accommodate six people, just like the number. So there is a swimming pool, and there is this beautiful view of the Rift Valley. Here is the Rift Valley, and beyond the Rift Valley, you can see there is Ruenzori Mountains. Uh, it is a bit misty, but I'm told when it is not this, when the sun is, the sky is clear, you can be able to see Lake Albert and uh, what's the name of the river again? Sembliki River. Yes, and Sembliki, Sembliki River and Lake Albert. Apparently, Sembliki River uh, drain, pours from Lake George, Lake Edward. from Lake Edward, and it pours its water into Lake Albert. And Lake Albert is also at the border between Uganda and DRC. So Uganda and DRC share a lot. The same way DRC and and Rwanda also share a lot of natural resources. Now guys, at the top, you see that thing up, up there? Those are hot tubs. So if you want some hot tub, maybe in the evening it's getting late and you or maybe if you want to have a sundowner while you're in your hot tub. You just get up there, they'll provide you with the hot water. I don't know if there is a pump in the in each in each pod or they provide the hot water. I'm not very sure about that. We have not come here to sleep, but you've come here for the day package. I know all of you are wondering how much is the day package? Day package means you come, you swim, you have your three course meal, you enjoy the environment, you have the views, you take your photos name it that is what the day package means and each person each one of us paid 150,000 Ugandan shillings 150,000 Ugandan shillings is, is almost 6,000 Kenyan shillings yeah we are here to try the food and then we'll tell you if it is worth the price that we paid unfortunately we cannot access any of the rooms because there it is fully occupied that is just the downside to it we cannot have access the pods we are going to swim as we wait for our, our meal. In fact, they send you the menu in advance so that you just order everything from the starter, the main course and the dessert. So they prepare everything fresh, fresh. When we got in, of course, we were given some passion juice, freshly squeezed. Huh? Just squeezed. It is just squeezed. Now we want to swim here as we wait for our dinner. Actually, if we wanted our if we wanted our lunch right now, we could get it. But we decided to just walk around and take photos before we have our meal. It might be our early dinner.
Guacamole and chapati for starters. Welcome to the main course. The appetizer was best. Whichever whichever appetizer you take, just be assured that it will be spot on. Even this meal is good perfection now we're just finishing up with the dessert ice cream strawberry So guys, now the question is, was the 6K worth it? I would say it is a bit over the top, but the services we've gotten, I would really recommend because the food was awesome. I would give the food 9 out of 10. It was that good. I just wish there were different types of desserts, but other than that, the food was perfect or maybe close to perfect and the ambience is beautiful the swing reminded me of bungee jumping and i always need a dose of adrenaline every time so if you come with a long dress you know the bali experience you will get it here for reals because you'll be swinging up to the rift valley now the pods are such amazing creation i wish i could get in but i love the place I really love the place ensure you come early if you're you are you're coming for the day package so that you can enjoy the sun on that swimming pool because right now it's a bit chilly you can even see on the valley you cannot even see the, the valley that is how cold it can get yeah but now look at how the pods look in the evening just imagine when they are lit with some yellow lights it can be very very beautiful so it is a space for maybe a private event or because there are some people who've come to have a birthday here and maybe just a few people but they're working on expanding the the establishment it's only two years old since 2020 2022 it's only two years old so this is good and i would totally recommend it i know you'll feel the pinch of that six thousand but the photos you live with just say these ones are worth the they are worth the amount so guys it has been an eventful day and i wish to end the day at this high note so see you tomorrow very early in the morning as you go and check out more on fort fort on fort portal eh, that word more on fort portal there's a lot to see we have caves we have palace we have more crater lakes i mean check out We're in Fort Portal, part of the Uganda. It's actually a city, and I think it deserves the city status because it has so much. It is the touristic town in Uganda, together with Jinja, 
and we've been to all those places. We are going to check out the palace. You remember when we were in Jinja, we did not manage to explore any palace there because it was not accessible to the palace to the to the public. So we are hoping that the palace in Fort Portal will be available. It is the you know in Uganda there were so many kingdoms and chiefdoms. So the chiefs and the kings used to stay in some sort of palace. So we are going to check out one of them. And we have, beyond that, we have a lot of activities today. We mean very cool stuff. Just join us as usual, guys. Please hit that like button. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, watch this entire series. Watch the Zanzibar series. Watch the Rwanda series. Watch all our series. And then decide if you'll subscribe. But I know before you even finish the first one, you'll have subscribed. Cool content. Let's go. My travel buddies. This is your first video. This is my travel buddy, Hadia. Yeah, that is Patrick. And we are the fan team. We make up the fan team. The fan team is usually bigger than this. So every time, depending on who is available, we just go on, on the road trip. So guys, let's go and explore Fort Portal. So this is the Fort Portal town. So as we go around, we'll just be able to see the town itself as we go to different locations. Guys, the palace is being renovated. We cannot access it. At also so far we've missed two palaces how unlucky are we we're going back to town don't know the town so well so we're just using the google map to show you guys what you can see circles in the same place until we thought this town was very big but after taking this proper tour I tend to believe the town is not so big this is where we are going to Amabere caves waterfalls and campsite and then rough road again Hello, you're welcome. Thank you. waterfalls coming from the Rinzori mountain very clean water, very cold, you can touch, you can feel, very okay, you but careful, the rocks are slippery. Drinking, you have to boil first, mm -hmm. though some local people take it the way it is, and no problem. Okay. But for your immunity, immunity, you have to boil it first. Now, the Maveri we have here, we put them under two factors, uh, historical background and geographical observation. Okay. So geographically, they are stalactites, such rocks, which are shaped and nipples like this, and historically, Maviri. Maviri Ganyinamuiru, because people lived in this cave over years back, people like Isaza, Ndafura, Wamara, Isaza, Isimba, those people happened to live in this cave. Maviri. Then I'll explain further, when we are at Maviri, we can tell you another story, but for now, expect the bending, expect the rising, lots of questions, you can take photos, you can ask anything you want to know as Mavere are connected. <laughs> Being told, you can imagine how much he has to bend. <laughs> this place is wet when it rains heavily, okay. but now because we have been in a dry season, so Beautiful Valentine flowers, naturally growing, known as Osman. Again, if, if I no, pluck it, will it be poisonous? Osman. Uh, we use them for decorations in flower vessels, uh -huh. but uh, I really don't know much about uh, how safe they are. Whether they are but they have no problem because we use them in decorations. Okay. Mm, but of course, when you have children, I don't know the effect of this powder. Oh, no. mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
water comes from the Lenzuel mountain. So you can cut, you can see, it's very safe and dry. And it's drinking here. Then we will see some younger roots where a pool is standing. We have younger roots growing, known as canopy. Then we can even walk behind the water pool and come back here. But we still have food for the people here. And Mavelo will come next. Both will come next. Which club are these? Mavelo is going to be in the club. So, so. Can you can you access the club? No, no. You can access from where the wood is. Not the wood. So basically you cannot access it. I see a Mavelo. I see a Mavelo. I see a Mavelo. So when you come over the weekend, you'll, you'll have so many groups. That was our first stop, the waterfalls. Now we are heading towards the caves. Let's go. To how they are shaped and made for which you are the good life. Bread. Human bread. Okay. So these are my bread. <laughs> so and the breast and the nipples. Yes, the cows are the alien taste. This for the cow. What what? The cows are the this one. Yeah. one. <laughs> Oh, and the two more legs breasts. up to the wall are the dog's like breasts, yeah, right? Dog -like uh -huh. A bit of the face of a chimpanzee shaped like Love. with a lot of honey bees. Okay. So geographically, these are still part of are the stalactites. Bees? Yes, they are. Oh, I'm they are still yeah. part of the stalactites, <laughs> okay. known as maveri, <laughs> due to how they are shaped and nipple. Uh -huh. They look like breasts. And the long time ago, people that lived here, this maveri. And when you come here, like October, they will be dripping the sulfur, the carbonated water, and people are like, oh, you have seen Mavere, even milk is coming out of them. So initially, that's the Mavere the milk we talk about. Mm -hmm. What's okay. yeah. Nothing, you just take care. Uh, it is a waterlogged spot, mm -hmm. some water contents. But okay. those low are like also that. small pillars, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. From down, mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. even, even they can follow for your standing here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they will come here and they also have bees. People will make They are targeting you all. Yeah. Yeah. Not today, not very important. Oh, my arm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's another cave there. Like this one, but it's, it's not accessible to the public. But it's more deep and dark. One of the no, no, the breasts has fallen off. <laughs> no, no, the breasts has fallen off. <laughs> <laughs> People used to live that here. Back in Lizzie, in Saza, in Kuku, One king that we go would live here, uh -huh. but it was deeper than now. So particles kept on filling it. Uh -huh. yeah, it like a and uh -huh. in between the other exiting spot, uh -huh. that's where Kuku got it as a gatekeeper. Uh -huh. So when he became a king, he hey, Kuku used to stay here. Yes. What was he just keeping there? No, first was, oh, but then this was a big palace for them. Then oh. seven hundred years ago. They had a gate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Civilization was here. Mm. So, let me try. How do you talk about your heel? Are you okay, going okay, to okay. go I know you oh, can't. No, no, I'm done. This is an exercise for two months. <laughs> 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 Walking. Hold up. Hold up. Hi, to take one first. <laughs>
Kakato Lake could be formed there. Yes. This is a caldera by English known as a crater. For a okay. crater, this is a depression without water. Okay. But in terms of formation, it's all about eruption here. Okay. That's how every feature is here. Then as we go around, we are approaching the lake. Okay. With water. What is the name of the caldera? Uh, Kaliango Hills. All Ka these are Kaliango Hills. Kaliango Hills. Kaliango caldera at large in Nyakasura area. Then the other school is a Scotland founded school. Oh. I saw the school there. boys put on kids to now. So, ah, skirts. Oh, in Nyakasura, the Scotland. Hey, the I would like to go there yeah, and yeah. see men in skirts. But being a Saturday, they're in casual wear. So oh. Monday to Friday, that's when. Dakas, they should have been skirts too. Hmm? Dakas, they should have been skirts too. The casuals, I don't know, the casuals are... <laughs> <laughs> Is the caldera and the crater, crater lakes uh, formed in the same way? Exactly. Oh, it's the only... The only miss out is water. So okay. here what happened at times, uh, the magma goes back, closing the vent, mm -hmm. then there will, will not be water. Mm -hmm. so sometimes during the penetration does not reach the source of water, mm -hmm. then it is the caldera. Okay. But in terms of eruption, now we are stepping at magma that came from it. Okay. It only lacked source of water to be the crater lake at large. Okay. But in the background, the other swamp, that's where water passes through to reach the fall after the Renzori mountain. Uh -huh. the By then, that is Renzori mountain? Yes, those are Renzori ranges, mm. except they are a bit cloudy now, the dry season, so covered. Have you gone to the hot springs already? Yes. Okay, so you went through there. Yes, we saw Ruenzori Mountain, mm. most beautiful ever. Mm. Most beautiful mountain ever. I so don't know why you guys do not market it much. So you live around Fort Porto, Campana? No, 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 no. We are just guests. So we are on a road trip, yes. Oh. We are on a road trip. We drove all the way from Mombasa. To here. To here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about here? Uh, it is kind of a depression mm -hmm. uh, where people dig. So what happened there, when these hills were forming, mm -hmm. then uh, this formed up to there, the other one formed up to there, so it is kind it, of... It's sort of caldera. covered. Uh, yeah, it is sort of a valley, not oh. a caldera valley. Oh, okay. And people do dig from there. Okay. Mm. If you go, go slow, cause there's some things I'd never told you, why I don't know, I guess I've never... We have a number of 57 crater lakes. So 57 you, crater lakes? We, we see one and the other two are, one is behind the hill and another one somewhere there. Okay. So when we complete the top of the hill, then we magnify three of them. Okay. And there's some others, people up there. Mm, others are in different directions. Okay. Okay. Greater Lake is a greater cold key Okay. Mm. Okay, let's go more. So guys, it started raining and we had to take shelter in one of the nearby cottages before proceeding to climb one of the highest hills around where we could get a better view of the three crater lakes. Then we are going back through here. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we've been rained on. Mm. Yeah. And now you are sweating. And now you are sweating. Adia. Yeah, you see how the hiking rungus are helping. Mama Yango. Nothing good comes easy, huh? So we were rained on. We thought it would be so cold. But upon reaching here, so warm, fresh air, serenity, and God is great! Every time you travel, you just conclude that God is great. He made all this. God is great again. Now that one is the biggest lake. It goes all the way. It looks like even it has some rivers. And then there's another caldera there. There's another hill over there.
You're scared of the wind. You feel like it will blow you away. <laughs> You've come so far. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Traveling makes you Maybe gain new friends. People, some will sleep here, others here. Eh? Imagine there was a hotel here with a view of the three lakes. Mm -hmm. It would be really nice. Scenic. How, how tall is it? 1,600 meters high. Mm. But remember, above sea level. Oh, okay. Ab okay. Yeah. Which university is that? Mountain, no, mountains of the Moon. Mountains of the Moon University. Mm. There nice. is, this is Nyakasura. Is here. I thought the, the, Scot the, the Scottish school yeah. is Nyakasura. Mm. But it's but nice. This, this house is the channel, and you have your. Yeah, it would really be nice. This is a university. Yeah. No, like he's talking place. about the house oh, that is just the next one. to the lake. This one is that one hey, is. We are here seeing three. Kigere, Dikere, Ki and Saka. Kigere, Dikere, and Saka. No, Bikele. 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 Bikele is which one? This one. Bikele. Bikele. No, the other one. This is Chigele. Kigere. Kigere. Kigele. Bikele. Kigere. Kigere. As eh. in Kigere. Uh -huh. You saw the spelling as well. I can spell it too. Uh -huh. Then Bikere. 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 This is a foot. This is a flog. This is Saka. Yes, Saka. What is Saka? Sachlas. Oh, a circle. Mm. Saka. Oh. We are in the rift valley of the Rensori mountain. River. There was a river. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other last corner is the source of the river called Haksesero, and water comes from the mountain pouring mm -hmm. in there. You see? And around that house, there is an overflow. Ah. So when water is too much there, it overflows. Okay. But these two behind ones are volcanic lakes and no... Overflow. Someone should put a zip line here from one, from one crater lake to another or from one hill to another. Imagine a crater lake here. It would be so nice. Saka. I don't know the other one was called. Somebody can make the point. <laughs> okay, there's a, these, two na these two lakes have similar names. Kibere, I don't know, and Kigere or something. <laughs> Those, those names are very similar. You have to get to the top to see this. Now there are many other hills, like that one is the caldera. There's another hill there. There's another hill there. There's another hill there. And many others. And that is Ruenzori up there. Can, I can check that as well. Oh, you know back, back to the phone. I'll take another one here. Okay. The photo. Okay, no worries. Hmm. Okay, maybe because yes. they have to oh. have the small in front and the tall. No, yes. these ones yes. are together. Br put one down. <laughs> <laughs> no. For Kenyans. no, Kenyans is that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to take all of them. <laughs> okay, no. Okay. Uh, all of us. Are we balanced? Yes. Men, mom, Very yeah. close. Yes. Closer, closer, closer. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I will not take because I'm not there. <laughs> After you will set it and it, it. No, no, I'm joking. I'm always here. Cheese. 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 Yes. Yes. Guys, it's been a pleasure walking all this way. This reminds me of Central Island in Kenya, somewhere at the center of Lake Turkana. We also have three lakes like this one, three crater lakes. And this one. I, I like the fact that this one is just somewhere where everyone else can, can, can access. And Uganda, you have stolen my heart. It's so sad that I might be going home now, but hmm. we've made new friends. We've done a lot of hiking. Adia, that is enough exercise for the day, right? For the month. For the month? For the month. What do you mean? Excruciating getting up here, but oh, totally worth it. This was totally worth it. Huh? Let me just say my heart is full. Look at this. They have everything. They have the lakes, the crater lakes. They have the hills. Made the hills that uh, came up as a, as a result of volcanic eruptions. They have the block mountain. I mean, what else could anyone ask for? Imagine they have over 57 crater lakes in this region only. Can you imagine how blessed these people are?
So guys, we have come to the end of this trip and it has been such an eye-opener. I am glad I came to Uganda because it is a very unique country with very, very unique physical features that you won't find elsewhere. I am glad I came and Uganda is indeed the pearl of Africa. Crater lakes we came across were such a wonder. The views at Lake Muro were simply unforgettable. The beauty of Western Uganda was simply unbelievable. The Ruenzori Mountains blew my mind. I loved the water spots in Jinja and the rich culture of the people in Kampala, not forgetting the Ankole tribe with their most beautiful cattle. I appreciate all the hosts, guides and friends we made along the way, not forgetting all the locals who made our life easier in Uganda. Thank you very much. Ugandan people are so friendly. I'm also thankful to God for protecting us throughout the journey. We did not have any hiccups. We did not have any accidents. And we are very appreciative of that. And praise be to God. For those who are asking about the car, we did not have any issue with the car. The only problem we had is that the car has a low clearance. So there are some places we could not go to, like the national parks, because of the low clearance of the car and we were avoiding bumpy roads so if you are wondering if you have a small car you can go anywhere you want as long as you avoid those bumpy roads and muddy places always ensure before you embark on any journey you do proper service of your car to avoid any mechanical problems along the road thank you guys for following our journey and making our virtual family Thank you so much for your support, for your kind words, for everything that you've done to us. Even hitting those likes, like buttons and commenting is also a way of supporting us. So guys, we want to get to 50k subscribers very, very soon. So if you have been watching my videos and you've not subscribed, this is the opportunity to subscribe and also join the virtual family officially. Let's subscribe and share with our friends so that we can get to 50k subscribers and very very soon after that we will get the silver button of 100k subscribers aren't you excited about that i am see you in the next road trip we have so many road trips planned and we'll see you very very soon bye